Uh, hey friends, it's Pastor Ray. Welcome to day three of Hope Scrolling, and I can't wait to unleash this. This is the whole thing, 31 days to a way better way. And the Bible is all about a better way. The minute I connect with Jesus, it's a better way. Now, what, what does Jesus say about this? He's crystal clear. It's our church's mission statement, and it's the words of Jesus where he said, go into all the world and make disciples, okay? Now, what does it mean to be a disciple? For a lot of people, that word is like, it, it's a, here's ultimately what it means, okay? I let the work and word of God shape me, okay? And in other words, I'm a disciple to the degree that I am shaped by Jesus and by the Bible, and I am not a disciple degree that I'm not shaped by any of that stuff. Now, what in the world do I mean by that, and why is this shaping thing so important, okay? I wrote a deal on this, and I want to read it to you right now, okay? And if you just lean in, maybe write some of this down, unless you're driving, okay? And um, I want to ask a question. Why is it, including Christians, that everybody these days is so discouraged? They're so stressed. Why is everybody so angry? Why is everybody so toxic? Why is, every, why is hate rising? Why is hope descending? Why? Is our country so divided? Why are churches so divided? Why are families so divided? Okay, um, and then I wrote this. I'm concerned about our country. Why is our country so confused, out of control, and we are careening down very unhealthy paths? Okay, and the reason is this: become from because from politicians and pundits, every American has been manipulated, marginalized, mandated, misled, and shaped by toxic news 24-7, okay? That has filled our lives and filled our families with four things. Rising levels of fear, rising levels of stress, rising levels of hate, and rising levels of division. And that's why this is titled A Better Way. Is, a, is there a better way than rising levels of hate and division? Is there a better way? And absolutely there is. Why is this such a big deal? Because you shape your life. You change your life when you change what shapes you, okay? The Bible cover to cover literally puts us in a position where it says that will shape you and misshape you, that will shape you and bless you, okay? So on, behind me, okay, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, an entire book on getting freed to be shaped by God, okay? And the book of Galatians, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this stuff, just, you know, unless you're driving, watch this, okay? Paul says, so I say, and here's the theme, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires. In other words, he's saying, be shaped by the Spirit of God. And then he says, or for the flesh desires, what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit, what is contrary to the flesh. In other words, there are things competing for what's going to shape you. Then he goes on to say this, okay? But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And then he goes on, verse 19 and verse 22, give you two totally different lifestyles, okay? And he says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. In other words, if I'm not going to be shaped, by God. He says, the access of obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, sound like California, idolatry, witchcraft, okay, hatred, good Lord, that's on the rise, discord, divisions on the rise, jealousy, fits of rage, driven on a freeway recently, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, all this stuff is going on. Happens in our church, happens every. And then he says, and envy, drunkenness, okay? Is alcohol abuse on the rise, uh, substance abuse on the rise? And then he says this, he says, orgies and the like. And he says, I warn you, as I did before, those who live a life like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's going, here is plan A, okay? And it is, it is the path towards destruction, basically. And then he goes, or you got plan B, okay? And plan B says this, but the fruit of the Spirit. We'll come back to the word fruit in a minute. Here it is. And he goes, it's nine things. It is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he says, against such things, there's a lot. Every single one of you listening to this, everybody in every service we've had over Christmas Eve. Matter of fact, the Bible conference is beginning, okay? Uh, get there, okay? Be shaped by the Spirit, okay? The, every single person in those things, if you, if you give them a survey and you said this, would you like more love in your life, more joy in your life, more peace in your life, they would all say, yes, absolutely. Would I like more, more patience? Kindness, would I like people to be kind to me? And I like to, you know, would I like to have a rising level of goodness? Would I like to be 
faithful even when it's tough. Would I like to be gentler, okay? And everybody I know would vote to have a higher level of self-control. How does that happen? He says, that's the fruit of the Spirit. That's the result of the And then he says, against such things, there's no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. In other words, he goes, there is two things I can let shape me. Okay, I can be shaped by the world, or I can be shaped by the Spirit of God. I did a training thing. If you're going to write something down, this is worth writing down. I did a training thing with a bunch of CEOs, and I've said this ever since kind of around the country and did the same thing in Ireland, okay? And I want to give you a fundamental principle that this passage surfaces, okay? And here it is. Nothing great happens through you until it happens in you. This is exactly what he's saying. He is saying, it's the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, when I'm connected, it comes out. When something great happens in you, then it happens through you, okay? If notes, if I want something great for my future, I've got to get great things happening in me, okay? When destructive things happen in you, they don't happen through you. It is I want to be shaped by things coming in me, okay? Shaped by God, shaped by God's people, shaped by God's Word. And when great things are happening in me, then they happen through me, and my future gets better to the degree I let great things happen in me, okay? Maybe the best way to put this is this. Let me just ask you a question. What's shaping you? Now, if you're listening to me going, well, I don't really think the whole thing about shaping is important. Your influence don't matter, okay? If you've ever been a parent, every single parent I know, Every parent I know is concerned, including me growing up, is concerned about who their friends are. And I'm not afraid. I prayed. I said, God, keep all bad influences away from my kids. And, and then avalanche. Good. I would sneak into their bedrooms at night when they were asleep, and I would pray over them. And that was one of my prayers. God, keep bad influences away and keep good. Now, why is every parent so concerned about that? Because every parent's concerned about this, okay? I want to be very careful about it who I let shape my kids. I want to be very careful about that, okay? Because I want them in a great future. Great people will shape them. Great friends will give them a great future and a great self-image. And destructive friends will give them a limited little future they don't want and it will break their parents' heart, okay? And, and so the same thing, you don't graduate when you become an adult. I'm going to end up, according to this, so this is, I'm going to be shaped by this or I'm going to be shaped by the Spirit of God. Something's going to shape me. So I thought we'd end. Kevin Thompson wrote nine great questions, okay? And this is a nine question test on what's shaping you. And here it is, okay? Number one, over the past two years during COVID, have you grown in affection for those you disagree with, or do you find yourself more frustrated by their ideas and more apathetic about their well-being? That's too convicting. Let's move to the next one, okay? Number two, here it is, a shaping, what's shaping you question. Are you more likely to feel a sense of joy no matter what the circumstances or fear because of a specific event in the world? Am I I'm living with more fear or more joy what's rising in my life? Number, question number three, do you feel more at peace than two years ago, or do you feel a greater sense of stress and chaos? Question number four, have you learned to react patiently to life, knowing things will work out, or are you impatient when you don't have what you think you deserve, okay? Uh, my wife would give me a D minus on that question, okay? Um, number five, are you becoming kinder or more hostile? What's shaping? Number six, is there a growing sense of goodness within you or are there cracks of corruption in your character? That is really strong, okay? Number seven, has COVID made you more faithful to God, more faithful to gather with other believers, praying, obeying? Um, you know, it says, has COVID made you love your neighbor more? Is your faith becoming less or more important in your decision-making and your life, okay? Question number eight is this, would your political enemies brag about how gentle you are in disagreements or would they say you are harsh with their opinions question number nine is this do you have more or less self-control today than two years ago your and my answer to those questions and i'm about a d minus but i hope to get better okay the your answer to those questions will determine and be answered by what's shaping you 
In other words, the single most important thing about you, whether you live with joy and hope or discouragement and despair, is to change what's shaping you. If I want to change my life, I've got to change what shapes me, which means I've got to put myself in an environment where great things are happening in me and then they'll happen through me. I, this is, there's a lot of information in this little devotional. You may want to watch it a couple times and get this because I actually believe this, your entire future if I can pass you off for a second, God wants great days ahead for you. He wants you listening to voices that produce great things in your life. And he wants you tuning out voices that lead you to the path of discouragement and depression and division and destruction. The voices that shape you. Let the voices that shape you be the word of God and it will make all the difference in the world. Thanks for tuning in on this. We will see you at the Bible conference. Go online, register, make sure you're there. God bless.